uh, the queries with a caveat that we are awaiting a conversation with the management of Raymond Lifestyle and that will come to you at 11.40. But on that note, incidentally, we've got a query, the first one today from Kunal who's asking about Raymond Lifestyle. What's the call on this counter? Uh, for context, it was listed today the first step of the demerger from Raymond that will split into three separate entities. Uh, Avinash, it listed at over 3,000 and then since then there's been selling, I guess to a certain extent one would assume that this is profit taking. If you have the opportunity to buy though, would you do so right now or would you wait for some time? No, I think Alex, uh, it's always better to uh, you know wait for some time because typically whenever a demerger happens, I think uh, the stock takes some time to settle down. The markets would like to await the commentary from the management and look at hard numbers, you know, at least the financial data point numbers from this independent entity. Although one uh, thing is very clear that they have a very strong business model, right, from the fabric to the garmenting. And there is a very big opportunity in the urban lifestyle, uh, you know, space. I would believe that uh, there is definitely good value to be made, but I think it's better to wait for the management to come out, clarify their position. And I think look at at least the next one or two quarter numbers, because that is going to re-rate the stock in the longer term. In the short term, the stock is going to be purely governed by demand supply you know, mechanics. And I think currently what we are seeing is a little bit of profit booking from the initial listing price. So That's longer term, yes, but short term, I think the stock will be volatile. Yeah, volatility, brace for volatility. By the way, uh, investors in Raymond have gotten four shares for every five shares held in Raymond Limited. Uh, a lot of the uh, uh, in, in new investors are trying to get into this counter, of course, but let's listen into what the management had to say to my colleague Mahima. I think it's a very momentous occasion, obviously, for us. Very exciting times. Uh, now, it's obviously not prudent on me to put a number to it because finally it's the investors who put a number in and the price discovery happens accordingly. But I can tell you the opportunity which we have as we are unlocking this Raymond Lifestyle Limited as a separate entity is that we are maybe the only business in this space which gives the opportunity to investors to invest behind four verticals at the same time. One is a core branded fabric business which has been there for you know almost 100 years now. We have taken our beta margins to a record 20 percentage plus which is almost like a FMCG margin, EBITDA margin and that can be a comparative, uh, you know, indicator in mind while putting valuation to it. Another business that has transformed really in the last two years, the branded apparel business, where again we've reached a EBITDA margin of, you know, uh, good double digits, yeah. and uh, the business has grown at a very high pace. And that's where we're talking of another 800 plus stores over the next three years. So the uh, headroom to grow is immense for us there in terms of both revenue and uh, then improvement on EBITDA margins uh, also would happen. Uh, then comes the third vertical for us where we are moving in a pretty big way is ethnic wear. Now, no wedding in India is complete without Raymond in any case. Now, there's this big fat Indian wedding which is taking shape over the last decade. Ethnic wear is coming to its own and we've launched this brand Ethnics by Raymond, which again would scale up to almost 400 stores over the next three years. And that will add its own value uh, in terms of valuation. And again, there can be a comparative indicator one can take into account. And uh, I think we've created a very good package out there and the, the signs are very, very good for us there. Then comes our fourth business, uh, which is a B2B garmenting space, uh, where we have uh, the, one of the world's best uh, facilities in terms of 12,000 skilled workers churning out uh, you know, the top end garments for the best global brands. We have seen huge tailwind out of uh, China plus one, uh, Bangladesh plus one is playing out. We are the world's only vertical, vertical integrated player out there. And again, that's a disruptive growth business for us. So if you put together, these are four different verticals which given a great opportunity uh, for growth across. And if you have to put a valuation, I would just say put com comms to each and every vertical and then you'll see the valuation which Raymond has. Absolutely. Um, you know, Mr. Kadari, you're also going big when it comes to the ethnic, ethnic wear business. And uh, roughly as per my calculations, the margins stand at 22 to 23% right now. But, uh, you know, the margins can have a lot of headroom when it comes to the ethnic space, uh, you know, if, even if you mm. compare it to your competitors. So I want to understand that going forward from a long term perspective, where will the margins go at uh, from this 23% mark uh, to uh, from a longer term perspective, let's say by FI28? And what will be the levers exactly so i'll tell you first of all uh, the beta margin currently would be not uh, there's not a right way to look at a beta margins because it's a business we just started okay. will be an investment phase for scale up on this business for the next three odd years i can tell you what is the good indicator right now actually the gross margins we have okay. 
our gross margins are much much higher i mean i would say we are the closest to the best in class in terms of gross margins and this is despite having a much more superior fabric much more differentiated designs so what we have done a very good job along with the design package the retail stores i think we have made a very good job of our sourcing there so i think at this stage when the brand is in a large investment phase in both uh, store expansion as well as marketing the best indicator to see is your gross margins and they are way up there in best in industry and we are very confident once we have done this investment phase is over and we have scaled out to foreign stores then our margins will be best in class okay and in terms of your new businesses that you are undertaking the innerwear and the sleepwear business uh, what kind of margins you are expecting there again i would say the whole strategy is built on while scaling up apparel garmenting strengthening fabrics building the new so when you are looking at new businesses i think my first focus is to really scale up the businesses to a multiplier level one thing i can assure is that none of these businesses would be such that they'll keep on breeding beyond 3 years they will not they will be very very healthy margin business in 3 years time they are two very different strategies sleepwear is a strategy where we are looking at disrupting the uh, value part of the segment okay okay and there the cost uh, really the spends would be really more behind distribution and pricing Okay. and we have given a very good product at affordable pricing and i think that itself will drive growth we may not do a very large spend on let's say marketing for long term because that is also a multi brand distribution innerwear would be again a mix of both multi brand distribution and our own stores so i think both the businesses again along with ethnix building the future vectors of growth large uh, expansion uh, we will stabilize will break even in 3 odd years time and will stabilize at very healthy margins All right uh, that is the management of Raymond speaking to NTTV profit